the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie May through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us. The witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. 
He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Christians praise the Paschal Victim, offer thankful sacrifice. Christ the Lamb has saved the sheep, Christ the Just One paid the price. <coughs> Reconciling sinners to the Father, death and I fought bitterly. 
first day of the week. Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning. While it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture, that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Happy Easter, y'all. If you are a visitor, I assume one or two of you are, I welcome you. I ask that you read the visitor's card in the pew before Holy Communion. Uh, we will not have a uh, food and fellowship today after Mass, as I assume you all have your Easter plans, uh, but we will have an Easter egg hunt uh, following Mass uh, behind the church. The, uh, there will not be any daily Masses this week. I will be going on an undeserved vacation. Uh, the second collection today is for the seminary and education. We um, are very blessed in this diocese, if you're a visitor. We have 49 seminarians, which is one of the highest in the country, and uh, one of whom, uh, Bailey, uh, is with me. Um, he's been with me. The Triduum has been very, very helpful, so I'm very uh, thankful for, um, for Bailey's help. And also, I think we're due for a quick capital campaign update. Um, there, has been, there has been a lot of movement there. So... myself so we can put it on the YouTube. All right. So our capital campaign progress, uh, where are we? We are under contract with our architect, uh, which is a big deal. That really sets everything in motion. There was a lot of tedium that had to go into making sure uh, everything was correct there, but uh, that did happen. Um, we've also engaged a, um, a, a firm, a legal firm, in order to uh, look at um, parking because ordinance would require uh, a huge number of new parking spots, way more than we need, and so uh, the town knows we're interested in fewer parking spaces, so uh, we're looking into that, but we will meet parking needs, don't get me, don't get me wrong. And you may remember that uh, we had to go back to the architect in order to uh, get us to budget. You know, the schematic designs um, were beautiful, fantastic, but it was beyond the reach of our budget, even though we set a record for the diocese in a single parish campaign uh, raising uh, $7.6 million, uh, which is truly incredible. Um, so we've gone back to them, and they came back to us with an attempt to try to get us to budget, and I will share a couple images. You're not really gonna be able to see much from here and what I'll show you, but I did have these three of these images posted by uh, these the, the two doors, the exit doors of the church. And um, I don't think I'll put them online because there's probably going to be more work to be done because we'll need to um, we'll need to have this version priced again to make sure that it is uh, within budget. But uh, overall, I'm very happy with the direction uh, that the architects were, architects were able to to go, retaining much of the same features. Uh, that I was hoping to retain that would tell the, the narrative 
of the church. What is this church building trying to say? Um, the biggest sacrifice, of course, will be an exterior dome. So unless I get like a $1.5 million check out of the sky, um, it's going to be an interior dome with, a, with an oculus or a, a window at the, um, in the very top of it, which will be very nice. Um, so if you know somebody with a million five, I will put their name on the dome. I'll get a tattoo of their name on my back. Uh, I am not below uh, these things. Uh, so at any rate, um, what else? We have the same seating capacity as before, even though uh, we're looking to reduce the square footage. That's the fastest way to come to budget. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. So you're not really going to be able to see this, although it's more so for the when I put it on YouTube, but if you can see a little bit about that, um, it's very nice, it's very close. Um, so we'll see if they're able to get that uh, to, to budget and what an interior dome uh, looks like. If I can handle paper with one hand. Menya, can you separate those? <laughs> So an interior dome, it has the effect of a dome, but it doesn't, um, doesn't pop up above the, uh, the roof line. And so it's really difficult to see in, in this image, but um, you know, like I said, you get a closer look on the back of the church. And uh, so a really cool feature. Um, so that's where we are. Um, and there will be a lot more updates to come. So uh, do we have the cards in the, the pew? So if you will join me in praying our capital campaign prayer, uh, We'll ask our Lord to assist us in this great campaign. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. God our Father, creator of heaven and earth, and giver of every good gift, we ask for your inspiration and strength as we glorify your name through the work of our capital campaign. May your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by his work of redemption on the cross, bless the labors of our hands. May he, through the intercession of his mother, Our Lady of the Mountains, fill us with the Holy Spirit and bring our work to completion, all for the greater glory of God and the salvation of souls. Our Lady of the Mountains, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God reward you. Today is all about the historical event the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ, and our response to that, namely that of faith. But before jumping into faith, I want us to consider a few facts that we can know without faith. For instance, the world exists. Nobody disputes that. The world is ordered. We have the periodic table of elements. Hydrogen always acts like hydrogen. The world is knowable. We can know things about the world and have an intellectual life. There's also evil in the world. And I'd be hard pressed to find anybody who truly believed that evil was just an illusion. So in other words, there's got to be a moral quality of the world. The atheistic philosopher or atheistic scientist cannot explain these things. Scientists can explain many things, but they can't explain why the world is here at all, why is it ordered, why is it knowable. They cannot answer that. They can explain why hydrogen and oxygen act the way they do around each other, etc. Those most fundamental questions, they cannot answer. Or the philosopher, about why there's even morality at all. We know, of course, that there must be a God. To know that God exists actually does not require divine faith. It's reasonable to believe that God exists. Otherwise, how can we have the world? How can you have an intelligently designed world without an intelligent designer? Put it that way. You have to have God to put it all in motion. But we know that there's something more. We have personality. You and I have personhood, which is inviolable. And that personhood has got to come from somewhere. 
Ultimately, we're going to learn that it comes from the three persons of the Blessed Trinity. That's what it means to be created in God's image and likeness. To have an intellect and a will, a mind and a heart. For about 4,000 years, God was slowly revealing himself throughout the history of the Old Testament. And there were miracles during the Old Testament, one of the largest, of course, being the parting of the Red Sea, many witnesses to that. But 2,020 years ago, our Lord sent his son. Or at the time, it was just some obscure carpenter from Hickville in the middle of nowhere. And, but he went around at the age of 30 teaching really profound things such that they have forever changed our world. And they seem to produce an endless well inside the soul, his mere teachings. But his teachings weren't alone. He usually coupled them with miracles. So he worked many, many miracles to prove what I just taught to you is true. So he says that we must eat his flesh and drink his blood. That was a really difficult teaching. In fact, he had to be utterly insane unless he was truly who he said he was. But he accompanied that with the multiplication of the loaves. And so towards the end of his public ministry, he began to reveal more and more as to who he is. And ultimately, when he is uh, on trial in front of Caiaphas, the high priest, they abjure him. They put him under oath. And they require him to answer, are you the Messiah? Now, the Messiah is a mere king, an earthly king. So not a big deal. Somebody claims to be that. He, said, he not only said yes, but then he said you will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven. And that may not mean a lot to us here now, but what that means is, I am God's Son. I am divine. That is when the high priest ripped his garments, claimed that it was blasphemy, and they demanded his death. And if he's not God in the flesh, it would be a blasphemy. So in other words, this person... Jesus of Nazareth, he claimed to be God. There is no middle room when somebody claims to be God. They are either completely insane, a lunatic, or they know they're not God, but they're lying, or he is who he says he is, the Lord. So that's the three L argument that C.S. Lewis uh, made famous once again. He's either a lunatic, a liar, or the Lord. There are no half measures. Immediately after, he's literally tortured to death. Doesn't really seem like God there, does he? But then on this occasion, he rose from the dead. Jesus rose. This is his miracle of miracles. This is the greatest miracle to testify to the greatest truth that he is the Son of God. He's the second person of the Blessed Trinity. He was not created. He's eternal. He created the world. And what's more, he's now redeemed it. He's conquered the world. You see, humanity is fallen. We know that. It's like the Titanic after hitting the iceberg, and it's going down. And Jesus, by virtue of his passion, death, and resurrection, offers a lifeboat. Only one lifeboat. Only one. And that lifeboat is Jesus Christ. If we claim that there are other lifeboats, then we claim that his sacrifice was for nothing, because we could just go another way. And I'm not prepared to tell God in the flesh that he sacrificed himself for nothing. So he gives us this lifeboat. Now, when he rose from the grave, let, let's be clear, he's a historical person. He actually lived, Pontius Pilate, whose name is inscribed on rocks uh, in the Holy Land, uh, he existed. Jesus was actually tortured to death, and he actually historically rose from the dead. 
Now, do we have proof of that? Well, we have some very significant signs. One interesting one that happened just only six years ago or so is when they opened up his tomb, uh, opened the slab that kind of covers the actual place where his body lay, all the instruments, the scientific instruments, started going crazy, rather inexplicably. But I find even more compelling is the burial cloth that we heard about in the Gospel. Actually, two of them. We have both of them. The Shroud of Turin, which is the full body cloth, and the Sidarium, which was the face cloth that covered his face probably soon after he died. They're, they're taking him down. That's what you do. You respect the dead and cover the face. And there's a miraculous image on the burial cloth. The scientists to this day, this is the most studied artifact of history. The scientists to this day cannot explain this image, nor can they come anywhere close to replicating it. So we can spend all day with the Shroud of Turin, and you can go online and look at that. But needless to say, it's certainly a sign. Okay, interesting. But ultimately, we need something more powerful to attest to who Jesus is and what he did. We need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who testifies to our spirit, as St. Paul says, testifying that Jesus truly is the Son of God. He died because you have sinned and I have sinned. We couldn't pay God back for that, so he took on human flesh himself. He paid the ultimate price in, on our behalf, and he rose from the dead. This is something at the supernatural level. This is what we call faith. It is not contrary to reason whatsoever, but it is above reason. It's a higher knowledge. We have to have the Holy Spirit. Now, most of us were probably baptized when we were infants, and that's when faith was put in our souls. And But the faith was supplied by our parents and godparents. I think it's a good practice that we Catholics, as adults, or even as young adults, even though we've come to faith through baptism as an infant, that we renew our faith. That today, this Easter Sunday, you're hearing about the, the, the death and resurrection of Jesus again. And so now, how do we respond? I pray that the Holy Spirit, this very moment, is testifying to your spirit, to your heart, that this is true. And it's worth giving your life for. What in the world, what else possibly matters than Jesus? All this stuff going on in the world, does that really matter? Politics of today are forgotten tomorrow, and on and on and on. Jesus, by his death and resurrection, has conquered the world. Every horrible thing you've read about in the news the last year, the evil, Jesus has conquered. And he offers us a path for willing to follow him. A path that does conquer the world. So, what I want to do today is something we do at the Easter Vigil. We have the option to do today. That is, namely, after the homily, instead of reciting the creed, which is normal, we will renew our baptismal promises. So I will ask you basically two things. Do you reject something and do you accept something else? Do you reject Satan, his lure, his empty promises, the values of a fallen world? Will you reject that? And will you accept the truth of our Lord, that he's God in the flesh, he died and rose for you? I pray that the Holy Spirit is stirring within your heart such that you're willing to give a more vigorous response to that, so that your I do to those six questions are meant more completely. So that those baptismal graces that you have received are stirred once again, so that you come to a deeper knowledge of Jesus of Nazareth. You perceive what he did for you and for me, and that that leads to a deeper love 
you perceive his love for you, his offering himself for you, and it makes you want to love him back. What does that look like? Did Jesus hold anything back on the cross? Did he hold back a little bit of love for himself? Or did he give everything for you and for me? He didn't hold back. Why do we hold back? Myself included. Why don't we love him with every ounce, with every fiber of our being, with every thought, word, and deed? Why do we only give him a, a small amount of time and not more? If we hope to be with him for eternity, we need to get used to being with him. So it means us, this response, this renewal of our vows, what do we mean by this? It means I'm asking you to stand on this side of the line with Jesus inside the walls of this church where he is the king of kings and to reject the liar the prince of darkness, who is the prince of a fallen world. I'm going to ask you not to absorb the values of this world and to look in on the church and her teachings and Christ therein and judge it, but rather the opposite. To see the world, its fallenness, through the eyes of faith, through the teachings of our Lord, his church, despite the euphemistic slogans that the liar presents out there under the title of whatever it be, tolerance, love, equality, or whatever the case may be. Let Jesus form your mind and your heart instead of a fallen world which is passing by. And commit yourself to him. One concrete way you can do that, go to Mass every Sunday and Holy Day of Obligation. If we can't give him an hour a week, What's more important? Okay? And wherever you are in your faith journey, can you take one more step towards him? Okay? So, uh, lastly, we know that the Holy Spirit gives us faith, and guess who else helps us? Our Lady. She, at her insistence, our Lord performed his first miracle, turning water into wine, and it says at the end of that story that the disciples began to believe through that miracle, through the intercession of Our Lady. So, have devotion to Our Lady, be praying your rosary. At this time, I ask that you stand. Dear brethren, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observances is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so after we renew our vows, the response of which is, I do, uh, I'll come around with the holy water to sprinkle everybody to stir up once again the graces of your baptism. So I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I, I do. do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I, I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I, I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Amen.
I saw water flowing from the temple. and sisters filled with paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. For the Holy Father, Pope Francis, that like St. Peter, he may continue to lead the church in witnessing to the joyful truth of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all who have been dedicated their lives to God, that they may look for the things that are in heaven and be Christ's witnesses in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for the family of God gathered here in Easter joy, that we may bear witness to the risen Christ and reflect him in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for all the faithful and especially the parishioners of Our Lady of the Mountains Mission for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear O God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you, and receive the prayers of those who believe in you, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exult and with pastoral gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wonderfully reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Rusagnus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service out of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and count among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, 
all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Also, your servants through those sinners, open your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, through John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, who sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and so them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the command and from the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that, renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Go put the masses in there, Alleluia, Alleluia.
Michael the Archangel. Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the root of souls. souls. Amen. The sacred heart of Jesus. Have mercy on us. The sacred heart of Jesus. Have mercy on us. The sacred heart of Jesus. Have mercy on us.